our story today is about Elijah. The story comes from the Bible. Now Elijah was a prophet, which means that God had chosen him and God would speak to Elijah and give him special messages and Elijah would share the messages with the people. Now at the time of our story, there had been a great drought, which means there wasn't any rain for a very, very long time. In fact, it had been about three years with no rain. And Elijah had been living in a ravine. He'd been drinking water from the brook and the birds, the ravens, had been bringing him food. But as our story begins, the brook had dried up because there hadn't been any rain. And the word of God came to Elijah. And God said, go at once to Zarephath and stay there. I have instructed a widow to supply you with food. So Elijah trusted God and off he went. And as he got to the gate of the town, he saw a woman collecting sticks and gathering them together. He called out to her and he said, would you get me some water to drink? And as she turned to go, he said, and please bring me some bread to eat. The woman turned back and she said, as surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do just as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. Then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. So she went away and did just as Elijah had told her. And there was food every day for Elijah, for the woman and for her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jar of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Have you ever had a time when you didn't have very much, or when you were worried that you might not have enough? Sometimes we can look at situations in our life and we can wonder how is God going to care for us in this? We can become afraid. But at these times it's important to remember that God loves us and he can take care of us no matter what. In our story today we heard about a widow and she was worried because she was running out of food. She thought that herself and her son were going to die. She'd given up all hope. Elijah was also worried. The brook that he was drinking water from had dried up and he didn't have enough food. But then God came and he saved them both. God told Elijah to go to the widow to ask for some food. Well, that was unexpected because the widow didn't even have enough food for herself and her son. Why didn't God send her, Elijah, to someone that had loads of food, food to spare? But Elijah trusted God. So he went to the widow and he asked for some food. And the widow, she said, but I don't have enough food. I'm just going to have this one last meal. And Elijah told her, do not be afraid. 
God says there will be enough. She could have said no, but instead she trusted Elijah and she trusted God and she was generous with the little that she had. And then God did a miracle and he multiplied it and the flour didn't run out and the oil didn't run out and there was enough food for Elijah and for the widow and for her son. And it just kept going. God bless them all. Now, I wonder what's the most important part of this story. I wonder what this story tells us about God. It reminds me that God knows what we're worried about. And God knows what we need and when we need it. And he gives us what we need just when we need it. There is always hope. God always has a plan. Sometimes it's a bit unexpected. Sometimes it involves other people. Sometimes it involves a miracle. God will always give us what we need, just when we need it. We can trust him and we can follow the things that he tells us and we can know that we are loved. Bread nourishes us. In the moments of quiet now, let us remember and bring before God the times when we have felt nourished. For all that we have been given, for times of fulfilment, for times of satisfaction, for times of abundance and plenty, we thank you, God. Only the crumbs were left. Let us bring before God those times when we have seen only leftovers and crumbs. For the times when abundance and plenty is only a memory. For times when it seems impossible not to want what others have. For times when there is barely enough to sustain. God help us to notice to recognise and use what we do have. The cupboard was bare. Let us bring before God those times when we or others have had nothing. For the times when there is nothing to give and nothing to take. For the times we are overlooked. For the times we overlook others. God, give us what we need. Jesus encouraged his disciples to trust God to give them their daily bread. So let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Sometimes we can use our whole bodies to pray and that can help us to remember what it is that we're trying to say. So we're going to do the Action Lord's Prayer. This is the prayer that Jesus taught us when his disciples asked, Lord, teach us how to pray. So it starts like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Today we're going to make moon sand and it's something that's a bit like Play-Doh. It's a bit new to me, um, but it's fun and we can make shapes and, um, and little buildings and things with it and I'll show you a bit later on. But the first things you need are some flour. I've got one cup of flour in here ready to go. We'll need some oil, some vegetable oil, some food colouring if you want to make different coloured um, types of um, moon sand. And so taking my, my one cup of flour, um, I'm then going to get some of my colouring. And fairly generous, put half a dozen drops in, I think, to make a nice colour. And mix that with it's three tablespoons of water. So there we go, nice blue colour in there now. And then I'll take that and just tip that into the... Into the flour and start mixing it up. It's going to end up quite a light blue by the looks. Yeah? Um, okay, so then we need, this is a one eighth of a cup. So we'll pour that. And after I've started mixing that in, I'm really just going to have to use my fingers to be able to get this to all start to come together. So you can see now it's formed like a bit of a dough and then as I continue to mix it all in it's going to get more and more of a crumbly texture. So I won't keep going at that one, but you can see if you wanted a bit of darker colour, you would have put more colouring in. And uh, I'll just show you here one I've prepared earlier on in an orange colour. So I've had some orange food mix, uh, food colouring, and um, it's the kind of thing where if I just start to show you how you can play with it, it looks a bit like it's ready to make dough for biscuits, but actually it's just got a lovely texture to let you press it all in. I'm just going to make a little mould here. See how it comes out a nice shape? Or I can just press it all together into a shape on here and start to cut some things out. So, and use my, do you call them cookie cutters? But anyway, use my shapes and I can cut myself a shape. I can have all sorts of fun because then after I've cut my shape, I can then easily just crumble it all back up and put it back in the bowl. Have fun! Our God is a great big God Our God is a great big God Our God is a great big God And He holds us in His hands Our God is a great big God Our God is a great big God a great big God and he holds us in his hands. He's higher than a skyscraper, he's deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And he's known me and he's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. He's higher than a skyscraper. He's deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams And He knows me and He loves me since before the world began How wonderful 
to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. And He holds us in His hands. And He holds us in.